Okay, today we're going to be using these three lures. I've equipped them with hyper wire split rings and hyper swivels. To me, that's the best way to go. The lures themselves, the top one is a Shimano Orca. It is 1.6 ounces. It has treble hooks. Treble hooks means that it's going to track very, very straight. The one in the middle is a Williamson 1.6 ounce lure. It has single hooks, which means it'll be zigzagging back and forth, which is a very unique action. I kind of like that. The bottom one is a live target mullet lure. It, it's a rattler, very, very noisy rattler, but it's one and a quarter. It's just about the lightest I would go on a setup like this. I can barely whip it out if I force it but I use it because it makes a lot of rattling noises and it's very, very loud and it works. I love that rattling, rattling noise. Okay, I want to show people the way I tie my knots. Everybody has different knots, uni knot, fisherman's knot, whatever. I've always liked the Palomar, but hear me out. Okay, we do our basic Palomar, and I hope you guys can see this because I have to move my head down to film what I am doing. So I am doing your basic Palomar knot. Okay. Okay. That's what I normally do, but I have a way of backing it up. So you loosen here. I Okay. I go one granny. Two grannies. See that? Two grannies. I am going to slip these two grannies right above the knot I just did, like so. Oh uh, darn, that didn't work very well, so we try it again. Went up a little higher, so we're going to go one granny, two grannies, and we're going to try to get it as close as possible to the top part of this knot. Like, oh, that's good enough. Okay, and the reason why we do that, okay, see that? If by any chance I was to catch something really humongous, which is a possibility here, um, and if it does pull down slightly, it's not gonna pass that knot. That's the reason why I did it. You always bring a pair of scissors that is serrated, see that? This is just for braid. Gives you a cleaner cut. That's how I do my knots. Thank you. Okay, using my brand new Shimano Sparrow 6000. 30 pound test Jerry Brown braid. Using my new Penn Battalion 8 foot rod. And I'm using a 1.6 ounce top surface lure. That's Monkey Island across from us. Just 
give me the whirl. Ooh, not bad. Okay. I'm just gonna tail walk it back. When you tail walk it, make sure that your pull tip is high. When the lure starts getting a little bit closer to you, you slow down the the speed of your retrieval. This is a sparrow, so it has a uh, lower ratio. It's not a high speed ratio lure. Plus, you it has a manual bail, so you have to trip it as soon as you throw it. I mean, when you're just about ready to retrieve it. A lot of birds on here because this is bird sanctuary land. Okay. Notice I have a glove on when I want to work with Braden. Now that I switched to plugging for a little while, it's always good to be safe. This one, little walk the dog, crank, pop, crank, pop, crank, pop. This will cause the lure to dart from side to side, coming back just like a few inches under the water surface so you're not gonna see much splashing. Always keep the rod tip low to the water when you do this. You can see the action of the lure, zigzag, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Just trying out some different things here. Because it is shallow water here, I go with surface lures so I don't snag the bottom. That's it. Okay, now I'm using a live target mullet lure. This is a rattle lure, surface lure. This weighs one and a quarter ounces. Let's see what kind of reaction it has on the 10 foot rod. Yeah, just like I thought, you're gonna have to put a little bit, or a lot more oomph into it to get it out because it's one and a quarter ounces I'm using a 10 foot rod with this and I think anything that's probably one and a half and over is going to be better um, I can actually hear the rattling from here so maybe if I alter the weight on this one add a little bit more weight to it it'll be better hear that hear the rattle That rattling, rattling noise is good. That attracts fish in, but I think I would like it about a quarter ounce heavier. Still, when I crank it up, I can send it out. Still like, the, I'm gonna alter the weight on this one. I think I'm gonna add some weight to it. And I'm going to be doing a video after this showing how to add some weight to it. God, I can hear the rattling from here. Oh, what was that? Looks like I upset a, a mullet. That is so cool. You can hear the rattling noise. Right on. Okay, now we're going to try the Shimano Orca, 47 grams. Wait. Didn't want to over oof it because I hit the island. Gonna make a tail walk coming back. 47 grams is, let me think now, that is 1.6 ounces. Oh, I got some mullet jumping in the front. But this lure is coming in fairly straight, tail walking. 
Uh, the other one I've used, the uh, Williamson Lure, had a tendency to be a little bit more tail heavy, so that had a tendency to drag back and forth a little bit more. This one here is a little bit more, more reflective though. Different type of reaction. I have to watch how much oof I put into it. I don't want to hit the island and get all my stuff tangled in there. I like tail walking. Especially over here. It's not too deep here. It's only like three to five feet where I'm whipping. So I don't really want to snag anything because there might be branches just under the surface. A couple rocks near the surface. But I know this area fairly well. It doesn't have things like that. But I've hit sharks and the lures here, so I know there's big stuff around. Looks pretty good. See how it floats? Perfect. And a lot of surface activity, but nothing biting. Yes, jumping the surface pretty good. Just nothing wrong today. Only thing I caught was a stick fish. Basically a stick. <laughs> well, what I found out today was the 10 footer would definitely throw farther than the 8 but the 8 I'm a little bit more accurate I can make the lure jump and do what I want better than the 10 because the 10 has more of a recall action because of a uh, longer softer tip the lures top water lures with the trebles force the lures to run a little bit straighter whereas the um, top water lures I have with the single hooks they dart and weave a lot more um, depends on what kind of fish you're, you're looking for and what areas you're going to be operating. Like this is shallow water here, so I prefer the surface. Deeper water, you want um, the sinking type or the subsurface type. Also, areas of big fish, you may want to go with the 8 footer rather than 10 because you might need the hoisting power to hoist it up. So it depends on your style of fishing and what kind of gear you're using. Um, I kind of like what I'm using right now. The 8 foot or 10 footer is fine for this area and uh, I'll continue using it. Pretty nice rod, man. My first Taiwan in a while. Now I want to put some effort into it. What happens now? We're gonna zigzag it about an inch or so under the surface. Uh, this one jumps. This one, I guess, because the recoil of the tip makes the lure jump a little bit more. Either that or the mid body hook got caught up in the line, which is a possibility. the recoil of the tip that was making jump out of the water. The shorter rod was a little stiffer so I can impart more action to the lure the way I want it. The longer rod, um, the, the tip has a little bit meat recoil. It does the work for me so it depends what kind of style you have. It will dictate the length of the rod. This is 10. It's good for distance and the, it, the tip will make the lure dance a little bit more. The shorter one which is 8 feet you get a little bit more direct control on how the lure is going to react. You still get some nice distance, but with this I'm tossing about maybe 30 to 40 feet out further than the 8-footer.
and that's my review thank you make sure you you rinse off your babies at the end of the day Shimano Sparrow 6000 with 30 pound test braid $240 a Shimano Orca 1.6 ounce plug $25 the look on your face when you get a worthless stick priceless <laughs>